When I first met Elfie, she was this small woman who conveyed this vital sense of life when she talked about what it took to escape the tyranny she was suffering. The strength in her voice made it clear the courage that that took. And when she talked about the freedom that she found after she escaped the tyranny, that spark in her eye conveyed how much that freedom really meant to her. It was clear that in coming to America, Elfie not only found a wonderful husband and a place to make a home, she found the principles that went to the center of her life, the principles of liberty that she had done so much to find. When she found the Institute for Justice, she was so excited because the Institute for Justice was doing so much to defend those principles. We are delighted to be able to share Elfie's story with you. We are honored that she has chosen to support the Institute for Justice with her legacy that inspires us all. Elfrida Elfie Yatskovsky Galoon was born in East Prussia in 1932. In 1945, with the Soviet army closing in on her village, Elfie was separated from her family during a mass evacuation. At just 12 years old, Elfie ended up in a bomb shelter in Berlin, subsisting on raw potatoes and other scraps. When she learned of Germany's surrender in May 1945, she set out on foot, alone, to return home, a 600-mile journey. But even after being reunited with her mother and siblings, life did not return to normal. Under Soviet occupation, nearly all private property was confiscated by the state. Many refugees, including Elfie, were forced to labor on collectivized farms to provide for their families. Though she was only 14, she was put to work cutting trees to be shipped back to Russia. Mom never really liked to talk about what she had to do on the farm. I did know that the hours were long and the labor was very hard and she was willing to do anything to find a different job. To escape the hard physical labor, Elfie took a job in a Communist Party food store, requiring her to join the Communist Youth Organization. When the group arranged a trip to East Berlin in 1951, Elfie seized the chance to glimpse freedom. She snuck away from the group and visited West Berlin, but was spotted by Communist Party members while crossing the border on the way back. Well, my mom was back at work. She was cleaning out a butter churn and her boss came over to her and said, Elfie, don't look up. The police were here asking about you. You need to leave and you need to leave right now. So she left and she couldn't take anything with her. If she'd have stayed, she would have been imprisoned for 10 to 20 years. Elfie fled to a border town separated from West Germany by a river, razor wire, and landmines. I walked all day wondering what I should do next. I knew I had to get across. I was so close and yet a million miles away, but I had to try. Out of desperation, she knocked on a random door near the border. So this big burly man who didn't know her took her in, offered his mom food, shelter for the night, uh, told her how to hide from the guards. She made it down to the river, waited for the police to pass by. Uh, and in the middle of the night, she shinned across the remains of a railroad bridge. The ties had been removed, so there were just two steel rails spanning across the river. It got to the other side, and she was free. Elfie later captured her journey to freedom in a letter to then-President Ronald Reagan. My heart was beating so fast, I thought it would burst in my chest. I took a deep breath. There was something in the air, something wonderful. And then I realized it. My God, even the air was free. There was freedom in the air. I wanted to shout, I am free, I am free. But no words came from my lips, because by then my heart was in my throat. There I stood in silence, having no one else to share that moment with me, and being lost in the wonder of freedom. What do you feel when you read those words? Um, I think I know how she felt, uh, at least a little bit. Uh, when I was a reporter in Kyrgyzstan, uh, we were trying to interview someone we were not supposed to. And the law enforcement didn't let us. We essentially had to run away. And when I moved to the United States, um, I remember submitting an article for publication criticizing the government. Uh, and um, that was one of those moments when I was really happy to be in America when it wasn't a big deal. No one even blinked. 
because freedom of speech, for example, is just such an ingrained part of being in America. Anya Bidwell is an attorney at the Institute for Justice, a public interest law firm dedicated to defending vital constitutional freedoms from government overreach. Growing up in the former Soviet Union, she, like Elfie, knows how fragile and precious freedom is. In 2019, Anya became the third attorney to hold the prestigious Elfie Galoon Fellowship in Freedom and the Constitution at IJ. Elfie spent her entire life sharing her love for liberty with the world and making sure that this liberty is not lost and is not taken for granted. Elfie and her husband Ned created this fellowship to make sure that liberty always has an advocate in the courts and so her story inspires generations of others. It is my honor to share Elfie's story with others and to devote my life as she did to securing freedoms under the Constitution.